I'm Carrie Corgan, and this is The Opus, an exploration of legendary records and their ongoing legacy. In our latest season, I'm joined by Lizzie Hale, Warren Zanes, Daphne A. Brooks, and many more to revisit Jeff Buckley's Grace. We discuss Buckley's femininity in an era of hyper-masculine alt-rock, how the record's mythology was shaped by his tragic death, and the delicate work of keeping his legacy alive. Find us at Consequence of Sound or wherever you listen to podcasts. Consequence Podcast Network. And welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with... It's an interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. If you're not a subscriber to the series, uh, take that moment to hit that subscribe button. You've made it here somehow. Somehow you've landed on this interview. Of all the interviews in the world, here you are. So keep up to date because we put out multiple interviews every single week, usually three, between three and five interviews every single week. So uh, stay up to date. Subscribe at iTunes or Apple Podcasts or Spotify or YouTube or wherever you get your favorite podcasts from. I'm Kyle Meredith. Today, my guest, Griff Rees. You know him as the lead singer of Super Furry Animals. Uh, You possibly know him for the piles of solo and collaborative work that he's done over the years. And uh, both of those are true for this new record called Pang. Griff got together with uh, South African producer, musician Muzi for this really interesting record. All sing in Welsh, and it, and it has touchstones of, of Africa in it and other spots of the world. And as we're talking about, that's sort of important, maybe now more than ever. Although I do also don't want to overpaint that because it's full of just great sonic textures. It's a very fun record. It's still a pop record as far as what Griff does. But we'll get the backstory on the partnership and how it all led from the Damon Auburn power to Africa Express and eventually becomes what Griff calls essentially a remix album, even though the original is not something that we ever heard to begin with. We will, however, dive into those overwhelming topics that sort of uh, draw around the lines of Brexit and resistance. And in fact, how that ties to the super furry animal record Gorilla that came out 20 years ago this year. There's a lot in common with the themes that's happening. It is a beautiful record, and it is always a pleasure to hear. Talking about the album Pang, it is Kyle Meredith with Griff Rees. Hello. Dude, congratulations on uh, on Pang. This is such an interesting and and fun listen, and almost unexpected, I guess, considering, you know, how quick it was that uh, we heard the last solo record. But I thought we'd kind of get into the story, the backstory on this, because as I understand it, this album has its genesis around the time that you were working on Africa Express. Is that right? Yeah, it's quite an unexpected record for me as well. I ended up going on a recording trip to Johannesburg with Africa Express, and they worked on a track with a producer called Muzi, and he was um, working with a South African guitarist called Dukamensi, and I had such a great time recording that track, and then I didn't think much about it. And then I was, I was back in Wales, and I got commissioned to do uh, music for a, a performance, for a, a kind of video installation and performance, and uh, there was dancing involved, and I thought Muzi would be perfect to remix this track I had, and that became a track called Bye, Bye, Bye. And I, I, I loved what he did to the track, and I suggested we make a whole album, and uh, yeah, it happened kind of unexpectedly. You've, you've said it, it's essentially a, a remix album, which is kind of interesting because it sounds like you're saying it's a remix album of an album that we never heard to begin with. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, I recorded quite a simple record from Uzi based on my acoustic guitar with some drums and brass and percussion. And then he was over in Europe playing some shows and he came down to Cardiff in Wales, where I lived, for a few days to mix the record. We basically completely deconstructed the record and he kind of sampled everything into into loops and reconstructed the record. So I was kind of committed to, to making a... I wanted to make a, a kind of futurist record, which is sometimes hard when my main instrument is an acoustic guitar. I, I wanted to make a record that somehow embrace the future that still was based around just me and the guitar. You hear that, you know, you mentioned Bye Bye Bye, which sounds like it has sort of an African tilt to it in your acoustic guitar, and I didn't know if that was the influence of, of Muzi or 
or if that was sort of something rattling around from where you had worked with Africa Express, or if that's just a coincidence that it sounds like that. Yeah, I was working with some musicians in Cardiff. There's a, a musician called Nafamadi Kuti who lives in Cardiff and plays the balafon, a West African instrument. So he played it on the record. And, I mean, with Muzi, we were discussing all kinds of pop music, really, and African pop was part of the conversation, but also Daft Punk and Prince. And we weren't trying to make a, a particularly African-sounding record, but there's, you know, some instruments like the balafon kind of suggest it. Yeah, but then it's the albums in the Welsh language, so... It's, it's kind of a product of Cardiff, the city which I live in, really. It's a very diverse city for its size. And if, if anything, it's, it's a reflection of, of where I live more than trying to project anything else onto it, you know? I mean, it is interesting because, you, you know, you're talking about, uh, I, and, and <laughs> forgive me if I'm, if I'm stretching here, but, you know, when, when you're talking about this <laughs> collaboration with, you know, a South African artist singing in pure Welsh, but also, you know, uh, with with, with um, influences and pinpointing other parts around the world and styles. I can't help but sort of think, oh, and Brexit's going on around you. You know, you're talking about a world community at a time when when there are people, you know, in certain parts of the world who are trying to, well, you know, stick up the walls and make the borders. I don't know, is that lost on you? Am I trying too hard for that? No, I think it's crucial in this period that we build bridges, you know, else the politicians are, are certain politicians are desperately trying to destroy them and uh, burn all the bridges. I think um, it's probably no coincidence that I'm desperately trying to build conversations with with, um, with others, you know, um, from beyond um, the British island. And yeah, yeah, it's a very harrowing time politically, well, worldwide, obviously, but uh, it's a particularly distressing one in uh in Wales right now. It's, you know, it's interesting always to kind of look back at the past and, and tie it to the present and, and the future. And, you know, with Brexit's, you know, an overwhelming topic. And I know Wales is in its own kind of interesting state right now talking about independence. But but just a few weeks ago, you know, as the 20th anniversary of the record Gorilla uh, came around, and it was sort of that was sort of, in a way, the conversation at that point, too, right? Because, I mean, there's, there's a record about organized resistance, or not about it, but it seems to kind of weave <laughs> itself through it. And uh, even on the back, you've got, you know, nonviolent direct action. Like, w- how interesting that that, how unfortunate, but how interesting that that's kind of lined up like that. Yeah, I mean, in a way, that, that was another record kind of based around songwriting, but trying to engage with futuristic technology and, and um, you know, we were having conversations about where the technology of communication was going to take us. And, yeah, I, I think Pang is in a similar tradition to Gorilla in a way that um, I'm trying to engage in, in technology and also I wanted to have the Welsh language in a futuristic setting. I didn't want to make a kind of a trad Welsh language record, um, of which there are plenty of really good ones. I wanted to to make an optimistic record that um, engages with with the horror of the present, but um, but with a sense of optimism, you know. You weren't wrong. You you all weren't wrong. You know when you made that because at the time I, I'm using a specific instance here, but you know you're talking about cell phones and 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 that being sort of the 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 point of reference for technology at that moment. Uh, and where it was leading, and obviously we we now have you know the luxury of hindsight to see how that's played out. But uh, I I wonder I wonder if if the if the you of twenty years ago could have foreseen you know what something like you know, the power of, of of social media would have on us and how that's kind of played out. Oh, not at all. I think it's I mean the media has completely changed in the past five years, and nobody was prepared for it really. And these. I mean, these thoughts have been clearly influenced by Facebook targeting, for example, which nobody was prepared for, especially electoral committee. <laughs> Other the watchdogs of democracy certainly didn't, didn't see it coming and uh, haven't done anything about it. Which is scary in itself. When you're kind of tackling these issues, and some of them are big issues, and, and or a lot of them are big issues, but you're singing in Welsh, and, and that is a very, you know, um, regulated language, you know, to, to Wells, uh, I guess. It's, it's not often spoken outside of the country. And, and I kind of wonder if, if there's a little bit of, not fear, but worry that your message won't get across. 
Oh, not at all. Um, it's um, it's my first language. It's, it's kind of in a way, it's, it's stranger that all my records and and in Welsh. But with this record in particular, because initially we just worked on one track, and that happened to be a Welsh language one. And you know, Muzi's a contemporary electronic house producer for the most part, but um, but he speaks six languages, and you know, with the nature of South Africa, um, you know, you watch a soap opera and, you know, there's going to be three or four languages in different scenes. And when they talked about recording a record, he was like, oh, you know, if it's all in Welsh, I'm definitely interested. <laughs> so I think he was he was really interested in working in a, in a, in a different language. Uh, a lot of his music is in Zulu. But I think it's a good time for diversity of, of language in in popular culture, um, it seems to be less of an issue, for example, today in, in putting a Welsh language record out internationally. Maybe 20 years ago, it was a, it was a talking point. Um, you know, we, we're discussing it now, but it's kind of, it's a few questions into the interview. You know, it's it's not like a dominant thing. I think, I think in, uh, certainly in, in the kind of West, where, where we do get to listen to many more languages, I think now in, in pop culture. So it's, it feels kind of pretty good in a way, in, in terms of singing in Welsh, it feels like a good time. I agree. And, and, and that goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning about making the world bigger and, and a world community on top of that and, and exposing people. I appreciate you did it, but I also want to compliment that regardless of, of what language you're singing in, it's a really, really fun record to listen to. <laughs> I mean, just to have on, you know, it's, it's a, I love what the, you know, the combination of, of both of you has, has made right here. So, so thank you for the music. Oh, thank you very much. Ultimately, that's, you know, the power of melody and rhythm and emotion is, is enough, really. And uh, we can engage in the detail if you listen in, you know. Well, I certainly love uh, both sides of it, the detail and, and the melody. And Griff, congratulations again on paying, and, and it's always so great to hear music from you. I hope it continues at this pace <laughs> as a greedy fan. I really, really do. But uh, otherwise, uh, thank you for the conversation today. Uh, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Cheers. Love you. Bye. My thanks to Griff Rees. The new record is called Pang. And while we're at it again, it's the 20th anniversary of Super Furry Animals Gorilla as well. I do hope that we eventually get a deluxe edition of that. In other interviews, he has hinted that uh, they are they are working on that. So, so maybe, maybe that's going to come as well. Hey, before you get out of here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you're not already a subscriber, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube, really anywhere you get your favorite podcast from. If you're already a subscriber, uh, leave us a note. Uh, you know, give the, give the whole thing a review or just tell me where you're listening from or your favorite moment from the interview. You can also rate... The series, that is always a huge help for the series getting more attention as well. And then you can head to WFPK.org, where I do a show Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. I play uh, brand new songs from the day. We do some anniversary celebrations. Of course, there's clips from these interviews and music news as well. That's uh, WFPK.org. Consequenceofsound.net has your music and film news. You can also find me at Twitter, at Kyle Meredith, and Facebook, slash Kyle Meredith. And that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.